as uh, many of you know, uh, unfortunately, Senator Bernie Sanders couldn't be with us on Friday because of all of the things that were happening in Washington. Um, but we were lucky enough uh, that his, uh, to borrow from Ted Stevens, his, his staff sent us an internet on Friday. Um, <laughs> we didn't get it uh, here till today. Uh, and, uh, but thanks to the uh, series of tubes, uh, Senator, <laughs> Senator Sanders has been nice enough to record a video greeting uh, since he couldn't be here in person. So uh, without further ado, uh, the great Senator from Vermont, Bernie Sanders. Well, thank you very much uh, for allowing me to say a few words to you this afternoon, and my congratulations to the Free Press for once again uh, putting on another great and important conference. Uh, as you all know, I very much wanted to be with you, uh, but the possibility of votes in the Senate today regarding the government shutdown uh, keeps me here in Washington. Uh, in the short time that I have, I just wanted to make a few basic points, and the points that I wanted to make focus on what I do every day as a United States Senator and the efforts that I make in trying to improve life for the middle class and, and working families of our country. So what I want to say is that first, anyone in America who is concerned about the disastrous state of our economy, the collapse of our middle class, and the growing gap between the very rich and everyone else must be concerned about media. It is a media issue. Anyone who asks themselves why the United States is the only nation in the industrialized world that does not guarantee health care to all of its people as a right of citizenship must be concerned about media, health care, how it's reported, is a media issue, is a health care issue. Anyone who wonders why we continue to be involved in never-ending wars and larger and larger military budgets must be concerned about media and how those issues are reported or not reported. Anyone who worries about why we have not effectively begun to address the planetary crisis of global warming and the devastating impact that global warming is having now and will have in the future must be concerned about media and how that issue is reported to the American people. In other words, and these are just a few of the issues, for a democratic society to function well and to have serious debate about the most important issues facing its people. The citizenry have to be informed and they have to hear all points of view, not just the corporate perspective. Further, there must be an understanding that the impact of massive unemployment in our country or 50 million Americans not having any health insurance is almost, almost, as important as the exploits of Charlie Sheen or Paris Hilton. In terms of media, the, import, the important reality we need to understand is that we are seeing more and more concentration of ownership, which means that a handful of huge media conglomerates now own and control what the American people see what they hear, and what they read. And that obviously includes television networks, cable channels, book publishing companies, radio, and the internet. One third of America's independently owned television stations have vanished since 1975, as have more than two thirds of independently owned newspapers. The story for diversity of views and ownership on the radio is no better, it is even worse. For example, and this is an extraordinarily important issue, in terms of talk radio, and we have to be aware that millions and millions and millions of people every day are listening to talk radio. Approximately 90% of talk radio is now right-wing, including many that are extremely right-wing. 
Further, an entire major cable network is controlled by a right-wing billionaire whose job is to be a propaganda machine for the Republican Party. With the flow of information resting in so few hands, it is no wonder that on issue after issue, we are only getting one side of the story, and that is the corporate position. And let me just give you, as a United States Senator, just a few examples of what I run into every day on some of the most important concerns of the American people. We are hearing a whole lot about Social Security. Tonight, when you turn on your TV, you're going to hear some commentator, some politician, some pundit telling you that Social Security is going bankrupt. Millions of people now believe that, especially younger people. But the reality is that Social Security is not going bankrupt. The reality is that it has a $2.6 trillion surplus, can pay out every nickel owed to every eligible American for the next 26 years. And I know this will amaze you because you don't hear it so often. It has not contributed one penny to the deficit. Massive amounts of misinformation regarding Social Security. Right now, as all of you know, there's a great debate taking place in Washington having to do with the possibility of a government shutdown, and that is deficit reduction. Question, is there another way to move toward deficit reduction other than slashing programs for the middle class, for children, for the elderly, for the sick and the poor? The debate that I hear every day in the mass media is, well, do you want to cut 50 billion? Do you want to cut 80 billion? Do you want to cut 100 billion? How many children do you want to throw off of Head Start? How many community health centers do you want to close down? You do not hear much about, virtually nothing about, asking the wealthiest people in this country to pay a little bit more in taxes or the need to end tax loopholes, which allow huge corporations making billions in profits to pay nothing in taxes. In other words, on this huge issue that the whole country is focused on, virtually the only area that we are allowed to discuss is what we cut, not the issue of asking the wealthiest people in this country who are doing phenomenally well to contribute a little bit more so we don't have to do away with nutrition programs for low-income children. Then there's another issue out there. And I am a member of both the Environmental Committee and the Energy Committee. And that is the debate about global warming. Virtually the entire scientific community agrees that global warming is real. And almost all of the scientists who have studied this issue believe that man-made activities are largely responsible for global warming. And yet, when you turn on the TV or you listen to the radio or the newspapers, the message that we get is there is a vigorous debate. We're not quite sure. And that is an issue also that we have got to be dealing with. I have fought very, very hard in terms of providing health care to all of our people. Yet what I see every day, what I hear every day in the media, is that we have the best health care system in the world. How often do we hear information about the fact that we are today spending almost twice as much per person on health care as do the people of any other industrialized nation, and yet we have 50 million Americans who have no health insurance today at all, and some 45,000 Americans will die this year because they don't get to a doctor when they should. In other words, if you're serious about understanding where we are for health care, how different we are from every other major country, health care becomes a media issue. Now, let me just also say that the story and what's happening today is certainly not all bad. Yes, big media is moving away from the issues that matter on the ground to ordinary people. And we must be vigilant in trying to reverse 
that process. But at the same time, we should take a great deal of pride in terms of exciting grassroots internet news sources, blogs, and campaigns that are starting to fill that vacuum. We should be very proud of the host of progressive outlets and websites that have sprung up in recent years. Bright and articulate people across the country, many of whom have gathered in this room today, have taken it upon themselves to create a new generation of news on television, on radio, and in print, and on the internet. And I just want to thank all of them for what they are doing. You are doing an extraordinary job. Bottom line, and let me conclude on this note, that for all of us who understand what democracy is about, who love our country, who believe that the American people are entitled to hear all sides of the story, not just the perspective from millionaires and billionaires who largely own the media, we understand that we've got a whole lot of work in front of us. But I know that given the job that many of you are doing, we're going to continue the fight. We are going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to allow the American people to hear all points of view. And I just want to thank all of you for the efforts that you have made. Thank you very much.